In this video, I'm going to go over a question from a viewer here. They want to know how to remove a character from a file without using any other file. So in other words, no temporary file. And when I ask them further questions, I learned that we want to remove all instances of the character as well. So let's go over how to solve this problem in C. The first thing we'll do is create a character array just for the file name. So we'll say car file name 1024. We're actually going to open up the file twice once for reading and once for writing. So we'll say file star read, file star write for those two file handles. We're also gonna have to store the character that we actually wanna remove. So I'll say car remove to create a variable to store that character. Next we'll prompt the user for the character and the file name. So we'll say printf car colon to prompt the user. Then we'll say scanf percent %c and remove to store the character entered into the remove character variable there. Then we'll say printf file colon to prompt the user for the file name. And again, we'll say scanf and then percent %s and then file name to store the string entered into the file name character array. Next, we'll open up the file. Once for reading and once for writing. We're gonna say read f open file name and then r for read mode. Then next we'll say write is equal to f open file name r plus. So we're gonna say r plus here instead of w because this r plus mode is also going to allow us to write to the file. But what it's also gonna do is keep the original contents of the file and start writing any characters to the beginning of the file. And that's the behavior we want to solve this problem. Next, we'll make sure the file was actually open successfully. So we'll say if read is equal to null or write is equal to null, then we're gonna exit with an error. So we'll say printf error opening file backslash n and return one. So if f open fails, it's gonna return null. So we're gonna check to see if either of the file pointers read or write is null. And if it is, we're gonna printf error opening file to let the user know. And we're also gonna return one here because that's actually a signal to the shell here, to the terminal that something went wrong in the execution of our program. Next, we can actually start checking for the character in the file. So what we're gonna do is read the file one character at a time using the read file pointer. Every time we encounter a character that is not the character we wanna remove, we're gonna write that character of the file using the write file pointer. And remember, the write file pointer is gonna start off at the beginning of the file. We're essentially gonna be overwriting portions of the file as we read from it as well. But every time we encounter the character that we wanna remove, we're not gonna write it to the file. As a result, it's effectively gonna filter it out of the file. Let's go over how to do that. First, we're gonna make a variable to store each character we read in. So I'll say here, int c. We're also gonna keep a count of how many characters we encounter that are not the character we're trying to remove. We're gonna use that later to truncate the file to remove the excess characters from the end of the file. So we'll say int count is equal to zero. Now we're gonna have a loop that's gonna continue until we either reach the end of the file or we encounter an error reading from the file. We're going to include stdbool.h just so I can use the value true as the condition of this loop. So I'll say here, while true, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna use f get c to read in the character from the file. So I'll say c is equal to f get c read. We're gonna check now to see if we reached the end of the file or if there's been an error reading from the file. So we'll say if feof read is true or F error read is true, then we're going to break and we're going to stop reading from the file. So F EOF is going to return true once we reach the end of the file. F error is going to return true if there's an error reading from the file. Next, we'll check to see if the character we've encountered is not the character we want to remove. So if C doesn't equal remove, if it's not the character we want to remove, we're going to write it to the file. So we'll say f put c, c 
right. So now using our write file pointer that starts off at the beginning of the file, we're going to put that character into the file. We're also going to increment count because count is keeping track of how many characters we found that we're not going to remove from the file. Then finally, when we're done all this, we're going to truncate the file down to the count, to the number of characters that we didn't remove. And we're going to use the truncate function to do that. To use the truncate function, I'm going to have to include the unistd.h library. And then down here we can call it. So we'll say if truncate file name count is equal to negative one, we'll print it an error. We'll say printf error truncating file. And again, we'll return one as a signal that something has gone wrong. So truncate is going to shorten our file contents to be this amount of bytes, count amount of bytes, which is going to have the effect of chopping off the excess characters in our file. Now, if truncate fails, it's going to return negative one. And that's why here we then exit again with an error status. Let's try to program now. We'll compile it and it compiles okay. Now here I've got this file and this file has A, B and C and D characters in it in different patterns here. Let's try to run our program using this file. So we'll say dot slash D and let's remove the character A. So we'll say A and then file.txt. Now let's check out the file. And notice that all the A characters are gone. So we can now remove characters from a file using our program. Let's go over a little bit more about how it works. So up here in this loop, this is where the most important work happens. If we have characters like this in our file, we effectively have two pointers into our file, the read pointer and the write pointer. And so the read pointer is going to read through each character of the file one at a time. The write pointer is going to potentially write each character into the file if it's not the remove character. We also have this count we're keeping track of, which is the number of characters that are not the remove character, which it turns out is going to be the number of characters we ultimately want to have in the file. Now, let's say we want to remove the character C from this file here. We'll say these are the file contents. What we're going to do is read in each character until we reach the end of the file. But we're going to handle the case where C, the character we've just read in, is the remove character differently. We're not going to write it to the file where the write pointer is, and we're not going to increment the count. So we read in the character B first, and that will cause the read pointer to increment by one character in the file. Because the character is not the character we want to remove, we would write it to the file. The write pointer would also be incremented by one character, and count would be incremented to be one now. Then again, we would read in the next character. This character would have the same effect. It's not the character that we're looking for, so the read pointer would increment, the write pointer would increment, and the count would increment. And that's going to happen two more times like that with these characters as well. Then finally, we're at this character we actually do want to remove, C. We would read in that character as normal, and the read pointer would advance. But this time, the character is the remove character. So this code here isn't going to run. The right pointer is not going to advance. Count is not going to increment. Read will just keep on reading in the next character until we get to here. This is where the behavior is now going to be different. So now we go to read in this D character. And so as with the B and C characters, the read pointer is going to continue to advance. But now we're back to the situation here where the character is not the character we want to remove and these statements are going to execute. But now the write pointer 
is over here. So we're going to write this character. We're going to write it here, overwriting the C character that was there. And the right pointer is going to advance. And again, we'll increment count. The same thing will happen with this D. So the read pointer will advance. We're going to write that D character here. And the right pointer will advance. And again, we'll increment count. And this will happen two more times. So the read pointer will advance and advance. We'll write a D and a D. And count is going to be incremented now to eight. Now at this point, we're at the end of the file. So that's where we're going to actually stop this loop. But what we have now is a file that's pretty much what we want. These eight characters here are exactly the file we want. But we have these excess four characters here. So that's where this function down here comes in, where we're going to truncate the file to be count characters in length. So chopping off those four characters that are excess now. And then we're left with the answer we want. So we'll try our program again. This time we'll remove character C from the same file. And if we check it out again, we see that line is exactly what we expected it to be. Now, one thing I should mention about our solution to this problem is that right now our program is set up to work with one byte ASCII characters, but not two, three, or four byte UTF-8 characters. And that's because of this truncate function here. So the truncate function is gonna truncate our file down to this amount of bytes. So count amount of bytes. So we're assuming in our program here that each character is one byte because that's what we increment count by. But the character could be more than one byte if we're using UTF-8 and the characters that are more than one byte in UTF-8. And if that's the case, then our program is not gonna work. I'm gonna actually solve a similar problem to this in a future video where we talk about removing a substring and all occurrences of it from a file. When we do that, I'll talk about this problem then. Until then, hopefully this has been a helpful video on how to remove all instances of a character from a file without using a temporary file in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.